as an option. When you go to buy a car, there are standard features and there are other options that you can add to that vehicle. You know, we have to, you want, a, you want an engine and you want a transmission, you want four wheels and a body, uh, uh, but some of the other things, you know, like uh, uh, a cruise control or the sound system or, or, or the heated seats, those are all added options and if you want them, you can add them. And so some people look at the church as an added option in your life. Even people who claim to be Christians uh, think that the church can just be an added option to your life. I want you to understand something. 
The church is not an added option. It is a standard feature. Amen. All right? Amen. God is the engine uh, that gets us going, but the church is the transition, uh, transmission that helps uh, uh, with the movement uh, uh, in this journey that we're going on. If you want to get somewhere, the church doesn't just need to be a part of your life, but just as God, it needs to be everything in your life. Yes. You might be able to make it without uh, power windows, but you cannot make it uh, without an engine and a transmission. That's right. That's amen. Right. Hallelujah. So thankful, amen, for everyone once again who's here. Amen. We're going to go right to the Word. I'm going to read Psalm 119, 161 through 168. If physically you are able, I ask you to stand. Amen. I am so encouraged uh, uh, when I see children worshiping the Lord. Amen. But most of the time when you see children worshiping the Lord, it's because they have parents uh, who worship the Lord. Amen. Children learn what they live. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Psalm 119 and 161 through 168. This is uh, the longest chapter. In the Bible, Psalm 119, we're going to start in, in 161. I'm just going to read these uh, seven or eight verses here real quickly, amen, and then we'll ask God to bless this word and move on with this. Psalm 119 and 161 says, Princes have persecuted me without cause, but my heart standeth in awe of thy word. Been going through a fight. But I still look to the Word of God as my everything. I rejoice in thy word as one that findeth a great spoil or a great treasure. That's how he looks at the Word of God. And I hate and abhor lying. Everybody better say amen. 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 Uh, but thy law do I love. And listen to this right here. This might help all of us out. Uh, verse 164 says, uh, Seven times a day, do I praise thee because of thy righteous judgments? Wow. We had a praise session seven times a day. We think we're all right if we pray over our food and ask God to keep us safe as we leave the house. Amen. But this brother said uh, seven times, uh, did I praise thee? I don't know if you understand what praise is, but it's not just a little patty cake. Amen. It's giving God something He deserves. Uh, great peace have thy, uh, have they which love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. Lord, I have hope for thy salvation, and done thy commandments. Uh, my soul hath kept thy testimonies, uh, or thy statutes, and I love them exceedingly. And then the final verse that we'll read says, I have kept thy precepts and thy testimonies, uh, for all my ways are before thee. Everybody say amen. If you love Jesus and you want this word to do something great to you today and tomorrow and the next day and every day thereafter, I want you to shout Jesus. Jesus! Amen. Give him a hand clap of praise. And make Amen. I want to preach to you for just a few minutes today, amen, uh, uh, on, on some things. And I want us to leave here today with something that inspires us, strengthens us, uh, and gives this, uh, uh, this, this vehicle that we're in uh, some fuel to keep us along uh, this journey. Uh, Billy Bray was born in 1794, which was a long, long time ago. He was a miner from Cornwall. He was an alcoholic, uh, and he was always getting involved in fights and arguments uh, uh, outside and also at home. And at the age of 29, uh, he come to know Jesus Christ. Uh, and when he did that, he went home and he told his wife, uh, you'll never see me drunk again by the help uh, of the Lord. And she never did. And someone say, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. His words, his, tones of his tone of voice, uh, and his looks all had magnetic uh, power. He was blessed. 
It was as if he was charged with divine electricity. Crowds of miners would come and hear him preach. Uh, many were converted, and there were some uh, uh, remarkable healings. And he loved the Bible, and this is what he said. The promises of God are just as good as ready money any day. The promises of God are like ready, just as good as ready money any day. God is the God of promise. Faith could be described as trust in the promises of God. God makes a promise, and everybody say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. God makes a promise. Faith believes it. Somebody say, I believe it. I believe it. Hope anticipates it. Uh -huh. But patience uh, quietly waits for it. We've got the faith and we've got the hope. Uh, right. But how often do we have the patience uh, to wait uh, for the promises uh, of God? Santo. Maybe you don't know what ready money is. Uh, ready money is money in the form of cash uh, that is immediately available. Now, if you're like me, you, you don't know a lot about that. <laughs> Amen. But ready money is money that is there. Hey, uh, uh, we need a loaf of bread. Well, praise God. Uh, here's some money. Go get it. Amen. We need a new tire on the car. Well, here's uh, uh, $50, $60. Uh, go take care of it. The AC went out uh, in our house. Uh, well, here's the $5,000 uh, to take care of it. Ready money. Amen. If you have ready money, it's uh, easy to live life uh, a whole lot less stressful than it is uh, with an empty bank account waiting for Friday to get here so your good boss man will put some money in it. Uh -huh. Ready money, uh, amen. Uh, uh, Billy said, uh, ready money. Uh, the promises of God are just as good as ready money any day. Well, I want you to understand something. I have a book that is full of the promises of God. And what he's saying is these promises are better than any cash that you have on hand. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Uh, some of us trust uh, in horses uh, and chariots. Uh, some of us trust uh, uh, in gold and silver. But what we've got to understand is we must trust in God above everything else. Amen. Amen. Can you say amen? Amen. amen? amen. And I've got to find joy and satisfaction and peace in the promises of God. That's right. Amen. amen. The psalmist said in the scripture that we read in verse 165, Great peace have they that love your law. And nothing can make them stumble. Uh, amen. When you love the Word of God, nothing's going to get in your way and mess you up. Amen. You've been fallen? Fall in love with the Word. Amen. You've been stumbling? Fall in love with the Word. Amen. Get to know God more than you've ever known Him before. And I want you to understand something. You'll stand strong. Can someone say amen? Amen. 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 Uh, we've got to understand we need to find peace uh, in God's uh, promises. Uh, and the last place many people would expect to find peace uh, is sat and satisfaction and joy is through the words uh, of the Bible. Yeah. But verse 162 says, uh, I rejoice uh, in your promise uh, like one who finds great uh, treasure. I rejoice in the word of God. Uh, when was the last time that you got excited about the word of God? How many of you have ever found a $20 bill that you didn't know that you had? Woo! We get excited. Maybe you don't get excited about it. If I find a dollar, I get excited about it. Hallelujah. Amen. A rejoice. It's like I look at the Word of God like I found a treasure. Amen. <laughs> The Word of God, oh, well, that's just an old book that, that might help you. It's got some good quotes in it. It's got some things that, that, that help you along uh, life a little bit. But it's a, no, this Word of God is like a bountiful treasure. This Word of God is worth more than that 200 and some million dollars uh, that they gave away last, or they didn't give away last night. To, yes. Amen. Amen. Because uh, a lot of times uh, you, you, you're more likely to get struck by lightning uh, than you are to win uh, the lottery. Amen. 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 
But I'm here to tell you something. Uh, uh, there's a ratio right here that if you'll fall in love with it, yes. you feel rejoice over it. Yes. And you'll find something that is better than Hallelujah. silver and gold. You'll find something that is better than any friend that is in this life. Amen. Somebody say amen. 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 But I can find joy. I, I can find peace. I can find satisfaction in the word of God. And that's why I've got to get excited about it. That's uh, right. Amen. There are some times that all I need to do is just hear the word. Uh, and it does something to me. Uh, if that would happen to us more often, uh, we would be a lot stronger in this fight that we're in. Can somebody say amen? Amen. Amen. The psalmist in this chapter here used many different words to describe uh, the words of God. In this passage, he speaks of uh, your word in verse 161, your law in 163 and 165, and your commands in 166, your statutes in 167 and 168, and your precepts uh, uh, in 160, uh, 168. But here he describes uh, the word of God in verse 162 as your promise. I mean, your promise is as ready money. Ready money. The Word of God is like money in the bank. Not even money in the bank because sometimes you can't get to the bank. I mean, it's like money in your wallet. It's like money that is right there. Amen. That's what the promises of God are. You see, we've not learned to trust in them. That's why we're not as excited about this as well as we should be. Amen. We trust in a lot of things, but the word and the promises of God, we don't trust in them like we should. I want to praise the Lord for His promises. Amen. It's like finding a, a treasure. Discovering them is like discovering a great treasure uh, in your backyard. Uh, and as you keep digging into it, uh, you'll find more and more amazing and beautiful treasures. Uh, and this leads the psalmist to say in verse 164, seven times a day, I will praise you. Amen. I want to ask you, amen, how many times uh, uh, have you praised the Lord seven times in one day? We think once is enough. Well, you don't have to do all of that. I'll tell you what. Start doing it and find out how much our lives will change. And don't just do it as a checklist. I mean, I'm going to praise the Lord because He's good. I'm going to praise the Lord because He's kept His hand upon me. I'm going to praise the Lord because He loves me when nobody else loves me. He doesn't sit there and point out my faults. He sits there and points out the blood that's been applied to my life. Hallelujah. Amen. We've got to find a reason. And if you have to find a reason to praise the Lord and you can't dig around and you can't find it, then you need to create a reason to praise the Lord. There's enough reasons to lift up the name of the Lord. We need to get to a place to where seven times a day would be a small amount for us praising the Lord. Or you don't have to be so consumed. Oh, yes, you do. You live this life unconsumed with God, and I'll live my life consumed with God. Amen. At the end of the journey, you tell me who's a lot better off. Yeah. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Somebody say amen. 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 And we've got to trust in God's promise and, and wait patiently. Somebody say wait patiently. Wait, wait, wait patiently. patiently. Abraham waited for 25 years. Joseph waited for 13 years. Moses waited for 25 years. Jesus waited 30 years. If God makes you wait, you're in good company. Amen. Yes. Whoa, 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 wait a minute. I pray, I've been praying for oh, two weeks over this, and God's done nothing yet. I've been praying for six months over this, and God's done nothing yet. Amen. The patience needs to set in. And as we're being patient, we need to rejoice in the goodness of the Lord. Amen. As the old saying says, good things come to them who wait. 
Right. Amen. Amen. And we've got to come to a place where we are willing to wait. God, help me be patient in all of this. Amen. A lot of times you find the gap between the promise of God and its fulfillment to be much longer than what we anticipated. Amen. I prayed. Amen. And God, I just knew you were going to make it happen. But that, that waiting time is a whole lot longer. I, I knew I might have to wait a week or two, but you mean I'm going to have to wait a few years for this promise? Glory be to God. Oh, Hallelujah. wait a minute right. mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Lord, I, I want to be willing to wait. Amen. And they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Yeah. They shall mount up yeah. as wings, as eagles. Yeah. And somebody say, praise the Lord. Praise Amen. Amen. No yeah. matter how long it is. Amen. Help That's me, Lord, right. to be patient. Yeah. God's That's promises right. to us are the anchor of our souls. Yeah. Hebrews 6 and 19 says, This hope is a strong and trustworthy anchor for our souls. It leads us through the curtain into God's inner sanctuary. Amen. God, help me, Lord, to love the anchor that's been placed in my life. Can somebody say amen? Amen. amen. Help me, Lord, to be patient and to be willing, Lord, to walk this walk and talk this talk. Delay does not negate the promises of God. God keeps his word. Yes, it doesn't matter if it's a year, if it's 20 years, God keeps His Word even when it seems impossible. Yes. Even when the circumstances are contrary, God keeps His Word. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Amen. Uh, Abraham described this uh, uh, in Hebrews 7 and 6. It says, Bel But Melchizedek, uh, who was a descendant of Levi, collected a tenth from Abraham, and Melchizedek uh, placed a blessing upon Abraham, the one who had already received the promises of God. I want us to understand something. Amen. God gives us some promises, but along the way, there are also some blessings that come with those promises, in addition to the promises. How many people have been a recipient of God's blessings as you've been on this journey through life? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I thank God for what he's done. I thank God for what we see. Amen. We've heard prophetic uh, statements given time and time again concerning this church. Amen. We're 15 years old. We've not seen it all happen yet, but 15 years old is young. Amen. You've got a lot ahead of you. God is still working. Amen. We may not see it yet, but we see some things happening. We see some things shaking. We see some things getting ready to take place Amen. and because of standing on the promises of God. Hallelujah! When Abraham and Sarah were, pro were called by God, he promised them that they would be a great nation. He promised them children, but they had to wait many years before the promise was fulfilled. Now, most of us know the story. They were promised to, to be a great nation. Most of us know uh, what happened when the, the angel of the Lord come to share with them. Uh, Amen. You're going to have a child. Uh, at this point, they're 90 years old. They're old. You don't have babies uh, uh, when you get that old. It's just not, it just doesn't happen. Biologically, it just doesn't happen. Unless you have some doctor to help you out. They didn't have a doctor to help them out. We get, a, we get a story that the promises of God come true when, it, when, it, when an old woman finds out she's having a baby. Praise God. Hallelujah. Yes. Lord, help us. Oh, that did. Hey, this is the word of God. Standing, standing. Standing on the promises of God, my Savior. Standing, standing. I'm standing on the promises of God. See, you may not know a lot about that. See, that's an old hymnal. 
Amen. When I don't have anything else to stand upon and the world's telling me different. Amen. I have the promises of God. Amen. Well, Pastor, I've been praying for my children. Amen. I've been praying for my husband. I've been praying for years. I've not seen anything take place yet. Hey, you stand on the promises of God. He told you to be faithful to Him. Amen. He'll give you the desires of your heart. He'll give you the desires coming up with the Word of God and the will of God. We can trust her. And somebody say, Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We need to realize that the Lord did for Sarah and Abraham just what he promised it, promised them. And if you read in Genesis 21 and 1, something that does not make uh, any sense at all, amen, the Lord kept his word and did for Sarah exactly what he had promised. He promised uh, uh, this old woman a baby, and guess what? That old woman had a baby. Amen. Hallelujah. And she was thankful for it. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. I mean, I don't know about you, but when I get that old, I don't know if I would be wanting a baby. Uh, but, but, but perhaps if you've never had one. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, that's the desire of your heart. I mean, and so the Lord filled that promise. I mean, the promise was fulfilled because they waited patiently. Now, along the way, they tried to uh, work around it and, and, and help God out. And that's the problem. We don't need to help God out. That's right. That's right. God has it all in control. Yeah. And when we go trying to move, uh, move things around uh, for God, that's what gets us the mess uh, that we get ourselves into. I'm going to stand in the promises of God. God, you don't need my help. All I'm going to do is praise you. Yes. I'm going to trust in you. I've got faith and I've got hope. And I'm going to rejoice. Oh, yeah. and no way. Oh, yeah. Amen. Amen. God's promises are absolutely certain. Amen. The message tells us. Amen. In Hebrews, and then Abraham waited patiently, and he received the word that God had promised. God gave Sarah and Abraham just what they waited for. When people make promises, and I'm reading out of the message right now, they guarantee them by appeal to some authority above them so that if there is any question that they'll make good on the promises uh, the, author the authority will back them up uh, but the message says uh, when God wanted to guarantee his promises uh, he gave his word Amen. a rock solid guarantee and God can't break his word Amen. Amen. in other words uh, amen. Uh, a lot of people use collateral does everyone know what collateral is yes. used to you would go get a personal loan from the bank and you had to give them some collateral yes. a lot of times if you go get a car loan uh, they, 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 they keep the title of that car until you've paid them off as collateral just in case you don't pay that car off right. Right. they're going to come get your car and when, they, when you don't make that payment they come get your car you get all mad People out there trying to uh, get, beat the repo man up. Hey, buddy, you didn't pay your bill. <laughs> and get mad at the repo man. Don't Amen. quite understand it. Uh, Amen. But you see, God does not need collateral when he makes a promise to us. Amen. His collateral is his word. Amen. All I've got to do is give you my word. I made you a promise and it's going to happen. It is rock solid because God cannot break his word. And because his word cannot change, the promise is likewise unchangeable. God's word and his promises do not change. Somebody shout out. Hallelujah! Hallelujah. Amen. It's ready made in the bank when I have a promise from God. Amen. The writer demonstrates through Hebrews chapter 7 the superiority not only of the promises of God. We read how Jesus Christ is in the same order of priesthood as Melchizedek. And then how Jesus Christ, amen, is greater than any other priest or any other priesthood. And Jesus Christ is the righteous king of peace. Amen. And his name, Melchizedek's name, means king of righteousness. And he was also king of Salem, which means king of peace. And so Jesus is in the same order of this priesthood. So Jesus is the king of peace. Here's a promise to you today. Put your faith in God. And in the world around us, we don't quite understand. People are rioting. People are upset. People are not getting along. People are killing one another. A lot of people are afraid to go outside. A lot of people are afraid to be uh, uh, surrounded, uh, uh, to go to a crowd because of the things that are happening in our world. Yeah. Yeah. Right. 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 
Yeah. People are afraid yeah. if they're white. People are afraid if they're African American. People are afraid if they're Hispanic. Santo Jesus. That's right. They have we, we fear many things. Yeah. Yeah. And there's no peace. I want us to understand something. We need to put our faith and our trust in God. Yes. We need to let the love yes. of God permeate through us and around us and help it bring the peace that we need. Can somebody say amen? Stand on the promises of God. Trust in God. It doesn't matter who you are or where you came from. What matters is who you're putting your faith and your trust. Amen. Amen. Man, I have friends and family that are concerned, and I will not go into depth in the politics. I have a family that is concerned because things could happen. They could get sent out of this country today. Yeah. I have family members who are illegal aliens. Say, oh, they don't deserve to be here. They need to be kicked out of this country. They got there illegally. They need to do it the legal way. Well, and they're scared because the promises have been made. And I want you to understand something today. Regardless of what happens in our government, regardless of what happens around us, a lot of people were afraid of the economy and what was going to happen. The last two days, the stock market closed at record highs, which means things, things are not as bad as what everybody is saying they were going to be. But I have family members who are concerned. And I, I hope nobody sees this and wants to go get them. <laughs> but I, what I want us to understand is regardless, you see you and I sit here because we have a promise. Yes. I was born here. My birth certificate says that I, I'm an American citizen. So you cannot... Take me out of this country because I have that surety that I am a citizen. Amen. I belong here. Mm -hmm. I want to tell you something today. <coughs> if you've been, if you've repented of your sins and you've been baptized in yes. Jesus' name, and you've been filled with the Holy Holy Spirit, and you're living an overcoming life. Uh, and I want you to understand, you are a citizen of the kingdom Amen. of God. Yeah. And regardless uh, of if you're picked up yeah. and taken away from here, or if you're here, you're able to reside here peacefully mm -hmm. as long as Jesus is with you. That is all that really matters. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Scripture tells us in Hebrews chapter 7, uh, amen, that the, the, the priesthood of Jesus is permanent. Uh, there is no end of life uh, uh, that's recorded for Melchizedek. Likewise, Jesus is a living priest forever. And Psalms 110 declares the Lord is a priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. We need to understand that Jesus is still on the throne. Yes. Amen. He still yes. reigns. Yes. Amen. He is still in charge. Can somebody say praise the Lord? Praise the Lord. I'm going to tell you something today. You may be afraid of what's going on in our world, but you have a blessed assurance that is better than money in the bank, that Amen. Jesus said, I will never leave you, nor yes. forsake you. Amen. Thank you Jesus. Amen. Somebody say praise the, Lord. praise the Lord. Amen. There's a lot here. Amen. We've got to learn. Amen. And there's so much more that I wish I had time to give to you, but I want us to understand. Amen. I have got the promises of God. I'm standing on the promises of God. I'm living in the promises of God. Amen. Amen. And if I've got to live, I, 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 I've got the faith. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I've got the hope. Amen. But sometimes because of that gap there, my patience wanes. Amen. I get to the place to where my patience turns to impatience. Amen. I'm no longer patient. So what I need God to do is help me build my faith and my hope back up. Praise, Praise the God. Lord. Hallelujah. I still believe God for an even greater revival. Yes. I still believe that there are souls in this county that need to repent of their sins yes. and be baptized in yes. Jesus' name. Hallelujah. There are souls that are longing to be full of the Spirit of God. I believe there are people who are longing to live a committed life unto God. There are people who are out there that are longing to give their lives and they're searching for something. And I believe that God has exactly what they need through this book, good book that we call His Word. Yeah. And I believe that all this world really needs is this right here. Yeah. I believe that the promises of God are greater than anything. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. I want to encourage you today. Don't be fearful of anything. We need to have a reverence and a respect and a fear of a righteous God. But we don't have to be afraid of that God. But we don't need to fear what this world can do to us. We need to listen to God's promises and then we need to use them to build us up. In other words, we need to feed on the promises of God. Amen. Those who feed on God's promises will never spiritually starve. But a lot of people put their trust in the wrong things. Some people put their, 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 their trust in money or security. But I want us to understand something. We don't have to do that. Amen. Amen. What we need to do is put our faith and our trust in God. Amen. 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 Knowing that God, hallelujah, yeah. will take care of us. Yeah. The scripture tells us in Ezekiel 7 and 19, it says they will throw their money in the streets, tossing it out like worthless trash. Their silver and gold will their silver and gold will not save them on that day of the Lord's anger. It will neither satisfy nor feed them, for their greed can only trip them up. Amen. There are a lot of things that people put their faith and their trust in. I need to put my faith and my trust in God. Because the things of this world will not satisfy me and they will not save me. Aristotle Onassis, one of the richest men in the world, said at the end of his life, millions do not always add up to what a man needs out of life. Many people try to fill the emptiness deep inside of them in ways that ultimately do not satisfy. They're looking for joy in the wrong places. Amen. Materialism is not a new concept, but wealth, far from bringing satisfaction and joy, can often lead us into pride, sin, and idolatry. Furthermore, wealth will never provide total security. A downturn in the market, a rampant inflation can lead to even a whole country becoming bankrupt. That's right. yeah. But even if that happens, on the other hand, the promises of God are rock Solid. Amen. Yes. What God says, He promises. Right. The Word declares. Amen. I'm going to read one more scripture to you if I can. What God promises, Amen. God will fulfill. Amen. What God gives us, Amen. God will follow through on. Amen. Ezekiel said. The word of the Lord came to me, son of man, is what the sovereign Lord says. And in the message, in verse 2, it says, his message is the end of business as usual. And I want to share that with you today. A lot of us, it's become normal for us to fail. It's become normal for us to pray prayers and not see an answer. It's become normal business to have nothing but chaos and trouble and mess in our lives. But what I want you to understand is God is going to bring something into your life that is an end to business as usual. Amen. Amen. End of being at the place to where you're saying, I don't have anything, God. I'm wore out. I don't have the strength. I don't have the answer. I'm alone. That's over. Because I'm giving you something that is better than ready money Amen. any day. Praise God. I know there are a lot of us who would love to be able to have that cash stash just for when hard times come. But most of us can testify more of just having to 
bear through hard times with nothing but hard times. But God is going to step in spiritually speaking. And He's going to give you the strength that you need. He's going to reassure you of His promises. He's going to tell you, hold on. Don't give up yet. Because right around the corner, you're going to see. Maybe six months. It may be 20 years that you've been praying. It may be 15 years. It may be 8, 10 years you've been waiting for an answer. And you haven't got it yet. I want to tell you, don't give up. The promises of God are as ready money, and they're better than ready money any day. Your fight, even though it's been a hard one, is almost over. And I want to speak to someone's life. I want to speak promise, the promises of God. I want to speak provision into somebody's life today. Who would receive spiritual provision today? Strength. I, I speak that in Jesus' name. Well, what gives you the right to do that? Oh, the Word of God gives me the right. I want to speak provisions of, of financial blessings into people's lives. I know that God is able to bless us exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ever think or ask. And, I, and, and, and I'm, I mean that spiritually, but I also mean that financially. If you're here today and you've been patient and you've not seen an answer to your prayer yet, and you've been in that gap, waiting, I want to invite you to come down here and just give God thanks, give God praise. God, I'm here one more time to let you know I'm still standing on your promises. I'm still trusting in you, Lord Jesus. I'm still believing. Whether it's a prayer for an unsaved loved one, Lord, I'm still believing. Whether it's a healing for a family member, or a neighbor, or a friend. Lord, I'm still praying. It's provisions uh, in your life. Uh, Lord, I'm still praying, and I'm still believing that you're going to meet that financial need, Lord. God, and I, and I don't understand how you're going to do it, but I'm putting my faith uh, and my trust in you, and I'm still standing on your promises, God, because you told me that I would be, uh, we would be the head and not the tail. We would be the lender and not the borrower, Lord Jesus. I want to stand on those promises today, Lord Jesus, and realize, God, that I need you, Lord. I'm not giving in. I'm not giving up. I'm not throwing in the towel, Lord Jesus. I'm trusting in your promises today, Lord. Hallelujah, God. You hold my in your hand.